heard about the scholars program through the African Science Academy, which is an all-girls school based in Ghana, which is seeking to raise the next Albert Einsteins of Africa. So I was one of the 24 students from across the continent who were actually studying there. Coming to Edinburgh changed a lot, I must say. I came in with a mindset of, oh, I want to do music education. I want to be a very good concert pianist and orchestra, orchestra conductor. And that was the three things of my mind, nothing more. I had never heard about the university. I had never been out of the continent, but I obviously did some research and there was the multi-million dollar, why do you want to come to Edinburgh? Just the network of <laughs> the community on campus. I just began to like tap deep into other things I'm capable of doing. When I came in at first, I had an idea, but how do I plan it out? How do I navigate the path towards achieving what I want to achieve? Because it's easy to conceive, to, to have the idea, but bringing it to friction sometimes might be doughty. And um, that's one major way the foundation has helped me. And not just from the team, but also the community of scholars on the program. I, I am inspired every time I meet another scholar talking about their story, looking into the future of what they want to do, that's just indirectly or sometimes directly gets me up again to like, oh, I am on this journey with this amazing court and I'm, we all are aiming towards like improving Africa in the long term. As a young girl growing up in Northern Nigeria who had always wanted to be an architect for the longest time, and had been told that I was too ambitious and I needed to minimize my dreams and um, tone it down a little bit. I was itching for someone to believe in me. I was itching for someone to see the potential that I thought I had. And the actual thought of me being here never actually occurred to me. I just knew that I wanted to go to university. I knew that education was such a key thing for me. In a lot of ways, the scholars program and the ability to be here has opened a lot of doors for me and it has given me the ability to dream bigger, to be able to have like a team of people who are cheering me on, pushing me, telling me to keep on going and to have the opportunities to actually dream bigger as well. I think that's been really, really great. The expectation was that we would be bringing in 12 scholars, so we really worked hard to ensure that we were able to support scholars. Um, the inaugural class of, of um, the scholars program um, to arrive in Edinburgh and we built the program alongside scholars. Um, those 12 scholars were really important in terms of the success of the program, developing the foundation of, of which the program would, would then grow. Um, and their contributions are a real testament to, I believe, where the scholars program is today. We've taken a number of different approaches to recruiting scholars over the years as we've learned and evolved our recruitment practices. Um, we've really worked um, in partnership with organisations across the African continent who have been walking alongside and supporting secondary school students and we really relied on them as we developed our inclusive recruitment practices to be able to help us to identify potential scholars who would become part of our scholars community here. If I was to describe it in one word, it feels really supportive. Um, I, I can't imagine what it would have been like had I come without the Scholars Programme because it's a very different environment and the MasterCAD Foundation team were there to sort of support me and, and hold my hand through, through that process. But there's also this, the support that one gets from this from the scholars community more generally. I think it's really great being able to have a network of people, you know, who knows one of my friends might go on to be the next president of Ghana. And because of the scholars program, I've been able to engage with, you know, the future of the continent. And um, there's so many amazing people that I've been able to sort of rub shoulders with. And I think that's something that I wouldn't have had had it not been for the Scholars Programme. We have really seen the values and attributes of transformative leadership um, lived out within our scholars community. 
in a huge part because of that first cohort of scholars that really shaped what transformative leadership meant. Uh, we've built it around this idea of understanding transformative leadership, practicing transformative leadership and embodying that. And as we work together with scholars over the years, we realize it's so important to know yourself, to know your skills, your goals, your ambitions, then to have the opportunity to practice that and see what that's like in, in reality and then to connect with others and think about what that means um, in the future. I started out teaching with the Edinburgh Young Musicians, um, working with children, as I said, like relating to music education, my passion for that. And after that, I joined the National Youth Choir of Scotland as a piano accompanist. I'm currently an organ scholar in St. Peter Luton Place, Edinburgh. Um, I direct the Edinburgh Bio Quarter Community Choir. Uh, this academic year, I worked with the Student Radio, Fresh Air Radio on campus, and I also directed the Edinburgh University Composers Orchestra. It's been amazing to see how scholars have really stepped up in formal and informal ways. So scholars have been very active in elected positions within their kind of um, academic communities and programs to societies or sports unions, but also delighted that, you know, we have seen Aisha become the first you know, African woman to um, be a, a sabbatical officer. I was surprised to find out that I was the first ever African um, to become a sabbatical officer at the university's history. Um, but that just goes to show why we need to have more representation. We need to have more people from diverse backgrounds actually taking up positions of leadership more generally. Because I think being, being able to be that sort of voice of the African continent and to be able to actually dissect some of the stereotypes that people have and to be able to take up space unapologetically, I think is one of the things I've gotten through um, the various um, training that I've got from the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program. The program was designed to actually like develop us over a long period of time and at this stage I feel like I'm ready to go into the workforce. I have something to contribute there and looking into the long term I think I want to start out in the business space. I've studied music for quite a while now which is a good thing but also looking at what I want to achieve. I want to explore the business of the creative sector. So I also want to get experience in the business space. So that's what I'm going to start out with and possibly um, go to the business school someday. <laughs> in more ways than I can list, um, I like to think of it as the MasterCard Foundation Scholars Program providing me with a toolbox or you can say a toolkit which I can draw back from, from time to time um, whenever I'm trying to work on, on something. I think the program empowers scholars to find a voice and to develop the necessary mindset and attitude that is going to be needed to face the world. Um, and whilst I haven't graduated yet, I feel like I'm very ready to go out into the world and um, tackle whatever challenges the world throws at me with the determination, dedication and discipline, but also the resilience, courage that I have now found, um, I think would definitely keep coming up time and time again. It's been amazing to see um, the opportunities to share the learning from the Scholars Programme and see that influence the wider university to think about how we are able to be a space that not only is accessible for a wide range of students but actually enables their success once they're here and that's been a huge critical piece of learning from us and we're excited about the opportunity to share that wider across the university. What I've learned a lot from and what I've carried with me through you know other roles that I've held is about how to create an open inclusive space that's not led by those in the full-time role, but that it's about, you know, what we're creating together and it's about 
ownership and belonging and, and understanding what mechanisms can allow that to happen. If you had asked me where I would hope to be in the next five to 10 years, five years ago, I would have said designing the next iconic building in Africa. The African continent has so much potential to grow and become the sort of hub for, um, for new changes and new um, developments more generally. And I want to be a part of shaping that. In the future, I really look at exploring the creative sector in Nigeria. And um, I think that would, that would come probably after my MBA and just seeing how I can develop what is there. A lot is happening in, in Nigeria at the moment. A lot is happening across Africa in terms of like music, in terms of like the film industry, a, a whole lot is happening. But I really can't say what it's going to be like in five, six, ten years. But building enough skills to actually like take it on from there to actually like navigate the path and see how it can be better is what I want to do and creating a system that works. I cannot stress stress enough um, how much impact it has made in my life and how many more lives have been impacted and I have gotten to work on some exciting projects that the university has embarked on and there is no doubt that you know, the, the quality of education that you're getting here, something that is un, unmatched and the framework around tr transformative leadership, life, lifelong learning and um, support as well. And you just get a masterpiece, I think. <laughs> Dare to dream. Just keep dreaming. And it ties down to when I wanted to apply to the scholarship program. And most people I spoke with back then were like, no, don't apply, they wouldn't take you for music. And um, I am here, I am here, you know. I sent an email out. I, d I did not know how it's gonna turn out, but I just had an idea, I had a dream. I had something I was pushing and I just went for it. And I was imagining like looking back, if I actually did not write that essay, if I listened to everybody who said no, I wouldn't be here. <laughs> so I think it's just like putting a foot forward and accepting that if, if you actually feel that you can do it, you can actually do it and just go for it. Yeah.